Euler's Tortian function. What is the phi of 7001? How do you compute this sufficiently? Euler's Tortian function, often expressed as phi of n, is defined as the count of relative prime numbers x in the range 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to n. For example, phi of 2 is equal to 1 because the GCD of 1 and 2 is equal to 1. Phi of 3 is equal to 2 the, as the GCD of 1 and 3 is equal to 1 and the GCD of 2 and 3 is equal to 1. And similarly, phi of 6 is equal to 2. We see this graph demonstrating Euler's Tortin function. On the x-axis, we have the different numbers n, and on the y-axis, we have the value of phi of n. So we can see this takes an interesting shape, and it's not at all continuous. So what is our first algorithm approach? We're going to try brute force. We're going to iterate over all the values from 1 to n minus 1, and verify if n is coprime with that number. Default initialize the result to n minus 1, and for each coprime, subscribe subtract the result by 1. So the time complexity of this will be O of log n with no additional space complexity. So we're going to use the Euclidean algorithm of GCD, which is O of log n, as shown in a previous video. And then we're simply going to perform the loop, as we mentioned in the description of the algorithm. This is a relatively straightforward approach, but the time complexity could use a bit of an improvement. The next approach we're going to cover is factorization. This vastly improves the complexity. We initially set the result to n, iterate over all values from 1 to root n, and verify if n is divisible by that value. If it is, then iterate over all its factors and divide n by that value, so long as it is a factor, and decrement the result by n divided by value. We'll get a time complexity of root n, and space of O1. So let's see what that actually means. So we default initialize result to n, as I mentioned earlier, and then we go up to the square root of n inside our for loop. If n is divided by i, which is the case of the modulo equaling to 0, then we, re we repeatedly divide that number by i, so long as it is still a factor. At the end, we decrement result by result divided by i. The best way to understand the intuition for this is consider the case we have 16 and 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4. And the reason we have 4 is that we can actually have 4, 8, 12, or 16 as different numbers that are not coprime because the 4 can be used as a factor in all of them, so therefore we cannot have a GCD that will be equal to 1. Lastly, we handle a simple edge case where the number is prime and we need to perform the extra computation. The third approach is actually for range sums, which will be the sieve property, and we will leverage properties we learned from the sieve tutorial in order to compute this efficiently. We can ap apply a similar approach which will yield the time complexity of O of n log log n with the space complexity of on. So this computes a range of values for phi up to n. This is more efficient than repeatedly doing n square root n. The way this works is that we default initialize an array where each phi index of x is equal to x. Similar to the sieve of Rathlacines, if we encounter a value that wasn't marked as composite, then we know that it's prime. If it's prime, this means that we can iterate up the phi array and notify it of any of its different factors. So this subtraction is very similar to the previous 16 and 4 example I gave prior. We simply have to decrement that specific index by phi y divided by x, and the rest of the algorithm goes through. Feel free to pause and inspect this code more carefully. And the last approach is the divider sum property. Gauss established an interesting property that the summation of all the divisors of a specific number, their phi values, add up to n. So from the equation Gauss established, it becomes possible to instead compute all the values bottom-up by replacing the formula and noting that n divides n. This yields a slightly worse time complexity of n log n, but it's slightly more simple to write than the other algorithm I proposed earlier with the sieves. So similarly, we default initialize everything of phi of x is equal to x minus 1. And then as we go through the for loop, we note that we can rearrange this formula where we have n is the default starting value. We subtracted 1 from the case of 1. And then afterwards, in each of these different iterations, we have the phi y minus equals phi of x. That specific instance of x, we decrement that value. So if you want to rearrange the summation, we have the summation of d uh, each divisor. We take the theta phi of d. We can simply move everything out except for the phi that we're interested in, which is phi of n, and then we subtract all the other phi's, which concludes our algorithm. Thanks for watching.